Lord on this Sunday morning. Amen. Everybody excited? Amen. Brother Jason talked about the root of joy. Amen. This morning talked about joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Amen. He is, he is an awesome God. And we do welcome everyone here this morning. Amen. If you're visiting, we're so happy to have you today. Amen. We just come to worship. We just come to praise. Amen. We just come to magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. So thank you for being here. If you're watching on Facebook, amen, thank you for watching today, and we hope the Lord blesses you. Let's lift our hands and go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you. God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence that we feel in this house right now. And we pray, God, that your will will be done in this service today, God. Not our will, but your will, God. God, we pray, God, that your healing would flow today, God. We pray, God, that your strength would flow today, God. We pray, God, that someone who is filled with your spirit today, God, and we will be sure to give you the praise and we'll be sure to give you the glory. And can everybody say in Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together and worship the Lord.
Oh, hallelujah. Put your hands together and give him some praise. Hallelujah. Let's enter into his gates with praise today and magnify him. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you the praise and we give you glory today, God. Hallelujah. We praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Continue to worship the Lord. My soul will rise in you. Though my heart may fail, my soul will rise, my soul will rise in you. When there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. Though the waters rise, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. Well, there's hope in this heart, I will praise you.
this house today. Come on, we be may endure for a night, but joy, but joy is going to come in the morning. that he deserves. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. In his presence is fullness of joy. Oh, I find joy in you this morning, Lord. You are my strength. You are my high tower. You are my comforter. You are my healer. You're everything that I need, oh God. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God, mighty God. Well, Timmy, I need some monitor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, the Lord's moving in this service this morning. This is incredible to be in the presence of the Lord and see the people of God responding in worship. Oh, uh, there's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than right here in Shreveport, Louisiana, at Calvary Pentecostal Church, worshiping together with you. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a great God. I said we serve a great God. It's good to see you, Sister Mary. Woo. All our visitors, it's good to have everyone here today. God is about to do something great. Anytime we go to the Lord in prayer, there's always that opportunity for that miracle to happen. You see... The Bible says when we start to praise him, he, he inhabits the praise of his people. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is in the midst. If you have an issue today, if you have a problem today, if you are sick in your body, today, today is the day. I'm telling you, there's something about to happen. I feel a stirring in the Holy Ghost. Let our faith arise. Let faith arise in you like the song said. Even when I don't feel it, even if I don't see you working, I know he's working. Hallelujah. We have a lot of needs in this house. We can see them on the board. And I want to invite anybody that needs prayer in their body to come down to this front. We will anoint you with oil and pray over you. We'll pray the prayer of faith. This is not a gimmick. This is not a gimmick, I'm telling you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to believe God right now. Brother Cox needs a, a special touch in his body right now. God knows exactly what's going on. We don't need to know it. God knows it. 
The Spirit of God is moving right now. As they begin to pray with him, let's stretch our hands towards Brother Cox and believe in faith that God is going to touch the issue right now. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in faith believing right now, God, you are the healer that we need at this moment. You are the great physician. You can do what the doctors can't do. Even if the doctors can't figure it out, you know exactly what's going on. I pray that you touch this situation. Oh, and every other need in this house today, oh God, there is nothing too hard for you. There is nothing too little for you to do. Lord, you are a great God doing great things in the midst of your people. Let's give them a hand clap of praise and worship him right now. All those that need a touch, anyone else that needs a touch can come to the front. We're believing right now. We're believing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, touch Brother Gary. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you bless this offering, that you bless every giver this morning, that you would give financial blessings to those that are in this house. And Lord, that you would use this offering for your kingdom, that you would anoint it and bless it. In the name of Jesus, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us to continue to worship in song this morning.
let's put our hands together and give him some praise and thank him. Hallelujah for being a friend that's sticking closer than a brother today. Hallelujah. He's a friend that you can lean on. He's a friend that you can trust. And his name is Jesus. And we give him praise and we give him glory. Hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise. Amen. Continue to worship the Lord.
hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't we just lift our hands, rejoice for a moment. Hallelujah. Our pastor is coming. Let's just lift our hands uh, and just thank him and rejoice today. Uh, hallelujah. We give him praise and we give him glory. We magnify him today because he is an awesome God. Give him praise. greatest thing that will ever happen to you in your entire existence is God forgiving your sins. Amen. The fountain of joy in the Lord is understanding that He's a God that forgave all of your sins, that He made it possible Amen. We talk about heaven. Heaven is possible because God forgave your sins. Amen. If you take, that's why we live for Him. If you took away all the blessings, you took away whatever financial benefit, whatever relational benefit, and He just forgive, forgave your sins, it'd be worth living this life for Him just because He forgave your sins. Amen. I do feel like that's probably the danger of a prosperity gospel. We kind of lose sight of something. But God gives blessings. We do have benefits in living for God. But that's not why we live for Him. Amen. He is our Savior. He is the one who died for us, who forgave our sins. Amen. I feel like somebody ought to be excited about that today. Thank you, Jesus. If you'd turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Yesterday was a long and busy day. There was a lot of folks tired. I am. But we are gathered here. Amen. And according to the scripture, God is here. Amen. And I believe that he has something to say to us today. Amen. 2 Timothy 4 and 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. And because of that, and understanding all that, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And what that means is those who have their affections set on his appearing. I've seen on Facebook recently uh, several ministers completely discount the rapture of the church. Dangerous precedent. He's saying here, look, he's going to catch you away if you have your sights set on his appearing. Amen. Verse 9, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world and has departed unto Thessalonica. I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. And I have kept the faith. I'm going to preach for just a moment today. Hopefully you'll get with me. It's not long. Uh, according to the number of pages of notes I have, it's not long. So you preach with me. And uh, we'll get through this. We'll preach about the fight and the finish. Dear God, I love you today. I thank you so much for your word, for your people. I thank you for the presence that I feel in this place today, God. I ask that you would continue to move among us today, that you would open every heart, plant the seed of your word in each and every one of us. God, help, help something grow today out of our time with you, God. Help us to be changed, to be more like you. God, we thank you for all that you've done. We ask you to bless it and anoint it. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. 
In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Demas was a man that Paul had won to God, his son in the Lord. Uh, we draw a few facts from the scripture about him and his life. He was a Gentile. He was, uh, like I said, a convert of Paul. And we know that he had actually begun to, to share some of the burden of the load of the church with Paul. And historical accounts tell us that Demas was probably a man who had, uh, who had come from a good name and probably from a lot of money. And he's working with Paul. And, you know, Paul is not necessarily the person that you would choose to follow after naturally, you know. Paul had in many ways lived a very difficult life uh, and opposite from his upbringing. He had been persecuted from almost the moment that he decided to make his, his ministry and his life about Jesus Christ. He, he was in prison for the majority of his ministry and he lived with what he called a thorn in his flesh that he was never delivered from. And that probably made him less than pleasant at some times. He was a man, though, in a secular sense that was destined to greatness. He was educated. He was cultured. Yet we see that he suffered in almost every step he took for the kingdom of God. In fact, historical accounts say that Paul met his end by being beheaded for the gospel. He gave his whole life to it. And Demas worked with Paul in the church, and Paul even introduced him as a fellow laborer, which is a strong indicator that he was an important part of the church. He was not just somebody that showed up and warmed a seat and left. He was an active and important member of the church, and he was a son in the Lord to Paul. He was not... A, a subordinate necessarily, he was an equal to Paul, shouldering responsibilities of the church. But Paul laments in Second Timothy that Demas has forsaken me. And he gives the reason, having loved this present world. Everybody still with me here today? Amen. Studies and historical accounts will find that Demas most likely went back to his home. For one of two reasons, he had a name and money there, or for the other, he didn't really like all this suffering that was happening around Paul for Jesus' sake. We don't find that Demas was ever again counted among the laborers in the kingdom of God. Of course, our wish is and our hope is that he did, but we don't see that in the scripture. But Paul stands out as a stark contrast to Demas. Paul switched from a high-profile, successful life uh, that seemed to a life that seemed to be met with struggles at every turn. And he gave his life to something. He could have had money. Likely did in the beginning. He did have notoriety, some fame. There he was likely in line, I studied at one time, said he was likely uh, in line to be a part of the Sanhedrin, which was a big deal. Brother Abe recently said that he studied and found that he was potentially in line to be one of the Caesars. So this is, this is not just anybody. This is, this is, guys, a big deal. And we see that unlike Demas, Paul, he had an understanding, though, of the stakes. They both came maybe from a name and and from money, but he has an understanding here of, of what this fight is about. He understood there was a fight to this finish that he was trying to get to. Then there was indeed a finish line, and he was embracing what was to come. Not embracing the struggles of today. That's how we make it through things, right? We're looking to tomorrow, and the scripture said, somebody quoted this just recently. 
Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In the midst of all of our sorrow, we're thinking, well, there's going to be another day. You know, to fight this out, or the Lord will take me, and we'll see some joy there on the other side. Amen. He gave everything that he had, all of his possibilities, his name, his status, his political ambitions. He gave all of this with one thing, a finish line in sight. And he said, to know God, that's, that's my desire here. Not to wallow around in my suffering, but I want to know him. Right. Philippians 3 and 10, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. He's saying, if by any means, I know if I can get a hold of this thing, he's going to take me out of here. Right one day. Verse 12, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. In Christ Jesus. Paul said, look, I'm not running this race as though I've already got it whipped. And you know, I I believe it it, it bears out in the scripture. Paul didn't think he didn't even have more suffering to come. I think he understood there was probably more prison time coming. There was probably some more beating. He knew that there was likely an, an unpleasant end coming in his life. But he said, I am pressing towards something. I I want to know him. Whatever this causes me, whatever it cost me here on this earth, I still want to know him in his suffering. He said in the fellowship of his suffering, it means if I can suffer a little bit, maybe I'll understand exactly what it means to be part of his. And he says, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. I want to know him so well that when that moment comes, his spirit quickens me out of my situation. In my circumstances, I understand that this life that I live doesn't stop at suffering that I have for his name. I understand I want to know him in his power. And Paul says, and because of that, I'm going to press toward that mark. I'm just going to keep on walking. I'm going to keep on running the race and fighting the fight. And I'm doing this all for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul's very nature was, I am going to run until I finish. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, I returned and I saw unto the sun that the race is not to the swift. And this makes me very happy. (laughs) The race is not to the swift because I don't think I've ever run, truly run a day in my life. They made us run in middle, middle school and I'd get about five steps and my lungs would start burning. And I just, I am not made to run. Um, But anyway, the race is not to the swift, thank God, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to the men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. For man also knows not his time. As the fishes that are taken in an evil net and the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. There is not one person in this building today or listening potentially on this live stream that is immune from the suffering that life brings. But those who are sold out to him, in the midst of the suffering, In the midst of the difficulties, just continue to run. They continue to fight, just to fight another day. And I'm not trying to win today necessarily. I'm just trying to keep on fighting. I don't have to finish the race today. I just have to put one foot in front of another. I may be be walking this race today instead of running it. You may be outrunning me, but that's fine. Today, at the end of this day, I'm going to try to take another step toward that finish line because I have that sight and goal I'm, I, in, in my mind I'm going to continue to run it doesn't matter how much you train 
or how fast you run. It doesn't matter how strong that you are. It doesn't even matter how skillful you are in the fight. I have also never been in a fight. A true fight. My brother and I used to fight, but I'm not sure that was really fighting. I do remember one guy in, in high school one time tried to fight me, and uh, I just put him in a headlock, and it lasted about 10 seconds. They broke us up. That was about the, the biggest fight I've ever been in. I've never truly even thrown a punch. Amen. I, I swung my hand over and hit my wife one night and, while I was sleeping. And, <laughs> and that did cause a fight. <laughs> It doesn't matter how skillful you are. I, I, I thank God for that. It, I, don't have to, I don't have to know how to do it exactly. I don't have to be this great runner. I don't have to be this great boxer to fight this fight, to run this race. And I'll get into this in just a minute, but I'm not running your race. I'm running mine. Amen. God's going to set the course. And it's going to be over when he says it's over. I'm just going to keep on trying to, I'm going to keep swinging until I don't have any energy or he pulls me out of the ring. I'm just going to keep going at it because I can see the finish line. Amen. Paul said again, 2 Timothy 4, 7, I fought a good fight. I finished the course. I have kept the faith. I understand there is a crown of righteousness waiting for me. I've been thinking about this particular scripture a lot lately. There is effort in a good fight. It never comes easily. You know, if you were to watch a, a, a boxer or a fight or something like that and that's really truly good and skill, skillful at it, there's a lot of training that takes place. They don't just get in the ring. They, they get some bruises and some scratches, and they, they exercise, right? I was thinking about this yesterday, too. I hate exercise. It, it ought to be very apparent. And then I was thinking very quickly after that, I'm not sure hate is strong enough word for how I feel about exercise. I've done it a few times in my life, but I hated it even then. And there are people that say, well, you keep doing it, you're going to love it. You, you're not going to imagine your life. I don't know how long that takes. It's much longer than I've ever experienced. But to prepare for something, and we are, we don't have to be skillful. We just got to run. We just got to fight. But our, our spiritual wisdom says we want to be. I don't want to have to walk through struggles that I don't have to walk through. Amen. I don't want to have to be stuck in a fight that I can easily get out of. That's the problem with things like bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. Why be stuck in that fight when God's given you a way out? So we want to be skillful, but we understand that that doesn't just happen. There's some training that has to be done. There's work that has to be done. There's going to be a whole lot of failures along the way. We're going to make a lot of mistakes. and yeah, Even the process of building muscle, when you build, how you build muscle is, is by trauma. It is stress and tearing that allows a muscle to grow stronger. And so it's, there's a difficult process. Of, there are hours and days and months put into preparing uh, a truly skillful person into a fight or into a run. And they do all of that so there's some muscle memory. So when they get in the midst of the fight, they're not focused on all the things that are distracting. They just know exactly what to do. They know where to guard. They know where to throw the punch because they're trained and ready. Mike Tyson said, one of my all-time favorite quotes is Mike Tyson said one time, that everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. That just really sums it up. I didn't really think of him as a great thinker. <laughs> that might have been before all the boxing. But in a figurative sense, I don't know one single mature Christian 
in my life that hadn't been punched in the face. We, we've all had some blows. We've all been put to our knees over circumstances before. Amen. It happens to the best of us. and You can't, out, you can't train past that. You can't be strong enough to not, be able, to not have that hit. It's just going to happen. And this is why the scripture says to take heed when you think you stand lest you fall. He's saying you got to be prepared at all times. And you know, Paul, one thing I like about the scripture is Paul didn't say, I won. I was the winner. He said, you know what? I fought a good fight. I did the best that I could. He said, I finished the race. There might have been hundreds past that line before me. I don't care. I finished the race. I was the winner of my race because I was the only one in it. <laughs> and for any significant race, the, in, the uh, issue is, and again, I do not speak from experience, is endurance. Enduring to the end. Endurance only comes from repetition. And then from pushing the boundaries of your training to get you out of your comfort zone and to being able to handle more and more and more of what might be put on you. You can't just jump in and expect to make it to the finish line. There's work to be done to ready yourself for the race. And he said, I have finished my course. I think this is a very valuable piece of information for each and every one of us. It's important to recognize that I am not competing against you. I guess this is just tagging on to my sermon the other day. But you are not my enemy in the race. I'm not trying to beat you. I'm trying to cross the finish line. Amen. If there is a competitor, uh, somebody that's pitted directly against, uh, against us, it's Satan. It's not you and I. As a matter of fact, I, I saw a video of a race years ago, very touching, of a man who broke his leg or something in the middle of the race and couldn't continue running. I, well, I think he got a charlie horse. But, but anyway, one of the co other competitors there came alongside and put his arm around him and walked with him all the way to the finish line. That's what this race is about. That's what this is about. Not trying to get there before you. Amen. It's, it's that we both get across the finish line. Amen. We all get the gold. Amen. We're not relegated to gold, silver, and bronze. If you pass, you get the gold. Amen. God sets a path before you. It's your job to make it to the end. You know what? You can fall and still make it. You can make mistakes and still make it. You can run slowly and even walk and still make it. You can stop running. That's dangerous. I don't recommend it. But you could and still make it. The only requirement you have is to finish the course. Amen. Thank God we have our own finish line. We're going to run to the finish. The race is not given to the swift and to the strong. We can all win. Amen. Praise the Lord. One thing guarantees the win. And Paul said it. I kept the faith. I kept the faith. There's one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. It behooves us to know exactly what that is and what it means. Faith is a way to sum up the apostles' doctrine. We understand each and every one of us, we must repent of our sins. Amen. We, we must turn from sin. We have to be baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, and we must be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And Paul is telling us that he has held on to the doctrine that was preached by the apostles. 1 Timothy 6 and 11, But thou, O man of God, flee these things that follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight. Lay hold on eternal life, 
whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give you charge in the sight of God, who makes all things alive, and before Jesus Christ, who before Pontius laid witness a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. My personal belief today is that Demas realized that this life was going to take over his old life. I think he realized he was going to lose his name. Maybe even uh, in, in his uh, political sense bring blight to his name. What's that lunatic? Is Demas, is that one of your kids? That lunatic over there preaching about Jesus Christ? I think that might have been exactly what it is, that he was afraid of his whole life, his old life being taken away. Maybe the, the security of the money that his family had. He couldn't imagine giving himself so completely to something that would erase who he had been. He hadn't come from nothing. He wasn't rescued out of poverty. And you know, it's easy for some people to come out of nothing, for God to pull them out of the mire and the muck and just make something out of them. But Demas wasn't like this. He was somebody already. And he wasn't willing to risk losing that identity to identify with Christ. But Paul had this mindset, I don't care what I used to be. I don't care what I used to have. Amen. This fight may be difficult. The race may sing long. But I'm going to keep the faith. I'm going to keep fighting the fight. I'm going to keep running the race. Amen. I'm going to keep the faith. I realize what's gotten a hold on me. And Paul, you, you, don't, you can read his writings and, and understand very quickly something definitely got a hold on him. His understanding, his depth of explanation and understanding, something had gotten him so deeply. And he said, I understand this is so much greater than I had before. This, this gospel that I've gotten, this is greater than my name was. This gospel that I have is so much greater than any riches or status or that I could be a Caesar in the Sanhedrin or, or that you would love and respect me, all of these things. This, this thing that has gotten a hold of me so deeply is so much greater than that. And I'm not running this race to compliment my whole life. This has nothing to do with the man that I was. This has something to do with erasing that so I can become completely what he wants me to be. I'm running this race so I can be his, so I can cross that finish line. This, this is my life. This is my fight. This is my name. The, these are my riches that I have here. And I'm going to fight the fight. I'm going to finish this race and I'm going to keep the faith through it all. Amen. Keep the faith. I, I can say this. The only comfort in the time of loss is that they've kept the faith. The comfort of my father and my mother, I knew they kept the faith. There's no question about it. There was no doubt. When, it, when I die, when I pass from this earth myself, I want everybody to say this man kept the faith. Amen. I want my children to understand that they're living a life that I died in. That I, I believe in this so completely. This is, there's nothing in this world worth uh, leaving this. Amen. Amen. I want my children to say of me, I want you to say of me, this man kept the faith. Yes. Amen. And I've thought about this lately. There's not, <laughs> there's not a lot of joy in the training sometimes. That's not the point of it. There's actually not even a whole lot of joy in the fight itself, probably. I'm sure there's an adrenaline rush. But there's not a whole lot of joy in that. The joy is in the finish. It's in the finish. We all run for different reasons. But that is our finish. All the training is for the finish. The race is run for the finish. And the joy of it all culminates in the finish. Don't run with the wrong motive. One thing I tell people, you never run from something, you run to something. We don't run from sin. Amen. We conquer it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're not running from sin. We're running to finish the race. 
Amen. We want to make sure that our motive is right. I'm not trying to, to get so good that these things of the world are, are no trouble for me. No, I want to set my mind on Christ. I want to understand his riches. Amen. I'm running toward something, toward him. I'm running to finish the race, and there is a distinction there. Sin is handled in the fight. Our endurance is tested in the run, and our faith carries us across the finish line. Hebrews 12 and 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Doing what? Looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. This is saying that Jesus ran the race. He endured the cross. He despised the shame. And he finished in death to buy your salvation. He saw clearly what the finish line meant. Now I don't believe that this, I don't believe that the Bible is saying that he enjoyed his suffering. I don't believe that at all. I believe he had joy knowing that his suffering was going to produce your salvation. He, he didn't enjoy it. He didn't enjoy taking your sin and shame on the cross. He's sinless, spotless. To be, put, to be made a mockery and hung on a cross bearing your sin and your shame, yeah. falsely accused, beat and spat upon and called all kinds. Do you think he enjoyed that? No, he hated that. Yes. He hated that, but his joy was you. Amen. His joy was looking to the finish and saying, once they cross this finish line... All the suffering will be over. All the pain will be over. All of the sin that they struggle with, it's all going to be over. They're going to receive the crown of life. If they could only know what this place is like where they're going, if they could only see the streets of gold and the walls of jasper and the gates of pearl, if they could see this crown of life that I'm planning to give them, that's the joy of the suffering. Amen. We know that he even prayed, Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me. He didn't want to do it. Amen. He wasn't happy about his circumstances. Nobody's asking you to be. Amen. We're finding joy in Christ. We're finding joy in our future. We're finding joy in our salvation. We're finding joy in that finish line. Amen. And it's our job now to set aside every weight. And every sin that so easily besets us. And to run with patience. That's the understanding. I'm not going to cross the finish line today. I can't have short term thinking. And that, that was my, when I was in middle school and having to run. They are like, you have to run a lap around this field. And I was like, if I can just make it to those bleachers. <laughs> if I can make it to those bleachers, then maybe there's some hope. But he's always saying, you run with patience. It's not looking at this next little goal and saying, you know what? You pace yourself. You know what? I'm just going to keep on plodding along. Today was difficult. Tomorrow may be great. It may be another difficult day. But that's fine. I'm just going to keep on walking. I see the prize. I see the goal. That finish line's there. I'm just going to keep on fighting. I'm going to keep on running. God's not tricking us. He's not moving the line back on you. Amen. You keep running, you're going to cross it. Amen. You keep fighting, you're going to win. That's what he's saying. Amen. 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 Musicians come, please. Some of us here are faithfully running the course. I know there are people here in this place that you've been running. You've been running for many, many years. I'm here to encourage you today. You just keep on running. Amen. You keep on running, you keep on fighting. It's going to be worth it all. Some beautiful, happy day. Amen. It's going to be worth it all. I'm here to tell you today, it's not time to relax and to be at ease. 
you're not at the end of your life and you're not at the end of your spiritual life where there's nothing else to fight for and there's nothing else to do. I'm, I'm here to tell you in the Lord today that there's still more to be done. You just keep on stepping one foot in front of another. You just keep on swinging. You just keep on getting there. You're going to cross that finish line. Amen. We're not sitting back at ease feeling like we've won or we have attained. We're just pressing toward that mark. Amen. And some of you today might just be starting out. That's fine. I'm here to encourage you today also. It's not too late. The race hasn't been running too long for you to join in. Amen. It's time right now. Right now is the right time for you to step your foot into the ring, to get into the race, and to start running. It's not too late. The course is not too long. God has set a course before you that you can run. I'm here to encourage you today. You know what? You can do it. You can run it. You can fight it. This race is bearable. The finish line is achievable. You are going to make it. It will be worth it all. God is not going to put on you more than you can bear. Amen. My word to you today. Hebrews 9, 27 says, It's appointed unto man wants to die. After this, the judgment. That's the cold, hard reality. Each and every one of us are going to face that day. And we don't know when it's going to happen. God will get to decide that. We can't escape the inevitable. I don't get to choose how long the race is. I don't get to choose what race is set before me. But I can run with joy. I can run with joy. Run that I might be able to say, I fought the fight. I fought a good fight. I, I have finished the course. And in the midst of it all, I have kept the faith. Not that I've won. It's not that I beat you. It's not that I was the fastest and I certainly wasn't the best. I just fought the fight. I fought a good fight. Amen. I kept the faith and I finished the course. I'm asking right now, just jump on in. Just get on in the race. Keep on running. Keep on. Keep on fighting. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. The prize is worth fighting for.
Thank you.